So with me now uh, is the leader of uh, UKIP, Gerard Batten, uh, who's got a uh, press conference launch here in Westminster today. Uh, Hello, pretty Alan. gloomy viewing that. Well, right? not really. I mean, as, you, as the chap said, and you said, there's five more weeks to go of this year, and that's a long time in politics, and we'll be campaigning every day of that five weeks. You introduced this as a fight on the right, but actually that's not true, because if you look at UKIP's arguments for getting out of the EU, they're actually the same as figures like Peter Shaw, Tony Benn, even Jeremy Corbyn before he came yeah. leader. Their arguments are broadly the same as ours. The arguments are not about the right or the left. Well, They're about democracy, who governs the country and who's accountable. Yeah, but I, I mean, I have to say, you know, I don't want to talk too much about opinion polls, but it's pretty clear where your votes are coming from. The Conservatives are down and Brexit and uh, uh, UKIP have, have got significant shares, although they've the moment, Nigel Farage's party's got more than three times as many well, supporters as Well, what's going to you. be interesting, Adam, is the opinion poll on the 2nd of May, when UKIP is running 1,400 candidates in the local elections in England and Northern Ireland. Um, so that Brexit's be not running in that. No, no, but it will be whether people are voting UKIP or not. Yeah. Uh, the Brexit party doesn't have any candidates because it's not a proper yeah. political party, but we do. And I'm very interested to see what our percentage of the vote will be then. I mean, if you had to define the difference between UKIP and Brexit, what would it be? Brexit, uh, and Nigel says, leave means leave. OK, we all know that. I'm the only person that, and UKIP that actually wrote a plan for getting out of the EU, which we published back in the 2017 when Paul Nuttall made me the Brexit spokesman. So we've actually, just don't say leave means leave, we tell you how we would do it, how it would work, what it would look like, because this is the whole thing. I said right from the start, Article 50 is a trap. It's a, a device devised, yeah. devi designed to stop you leaving, not to help you leave. So how do you get over that? And we've thought that out. But all you get from Nigel is rhetoric. Well, you see him there basically saying the difference was what some people are calling the unsavoury elements, the unsavoury associations uh, of the old UKIP. And, and, you know, many people would say that what you're really selling, your difference with Brexit, is Islamophobia. Well, if you look, he's insulted a lot of thousands of people who are still yeah. in UKIP, who used to be his big supporters. And we're there, still there. We've still got but lots he, and lots of them. he says his party is friendly to he, Muslim people, whereas your party's hostile. We've got a Muslim on the candidate list in our, for our European candidates. It will be yeah. revealed today. We are not hostile to people or groups of people. I just have said a few things about the ideology, and that's what we talk about, because that's what people are concerned about. I mean, do you, th do you think, for example, that Islam represents the Antichrist? No, I've never said that. No, but you endorsed a book which says that. Well... I, the, yeah, the broad I mean, you contents, understand the broad, Islam in under an hour. <laughs> the broad contents of yeah. the book, I mean, agree, doesn't mean to say I agree with every word in it. I don't think you yeah, I mean, do you think you can understand Christianity in, in under an hour? Well, look at all these bluffers' guides. They have to do everything. They slim down things well, and summarise under an hour, them. I have to yeah. say. Yeah. But, but, you, but what, you, what, what, what you say on the cover of this book, Western societies cannot afford to ignore Islam. Uh, and if they're non-Islam citizens, the infidels want to know what the future could hold for them. They need to read this book. Yes. What is that future? Well, you've seen it where we have more and more Islamic ideology introduced to Western countries, uh, and it's the extremist, ideal, uh, the extremist um, fundamentalist, literalist view of that is incompatible with Western civilization and Western liberal democracy. That's just a fact of life. Look at they've reintroduced Sharia law yeah. in Bahrain. Yeah. Who wants to live under Sharia law? I mean, I you, you, you've endorsed this book. Do you know who even wrote it? Yes, I do. Uh, I mean, two names have been given, yeah. Khalab bin Farash and Farouk mm. bin al-Ashraf. And he can't use his own name because his life might be in danger. And uh, is, is he a Muslim? No, he isn't. So it's a book but it purportedly was... written by someone with a Muslim name that isn't actually written but, by a Muslim. But as a Muslim scholar, long of my acquaintance, who's gone through yeah. that book and done the translations and verified it all, and he can't reveal his name either because their lives would be in danger. Now, to get back yeah. to Brexit... I mean, we've got a get problem... Back, can we, we get back to Brexit? Iman here we, saying... Can we get back to factually, Brexit? Well... Because that's what... It, this is not an issue in the Brexit elections, in the European well, it, elections. But it is if, if people think that your party is unsavoury and they don't well, think it that isn't Nigel unsavory. Farage is unsavoury. It isn't unsavoury. Nigel is a yeah. superb spin doctor, and this is going to yeah. be his line during this campaign. Yeah. Because what he, he is Tory yeah. light. That's basically yeah. what it boils down to. But this is an alternative yeah. Tory but, vote. But, you know, the problem is you're publishing your candidate list You've got someone on the candidate list who tweeted that, that he wouldn't even rape Jess Phillips. Well, come along to the press conference and ask him to explain that, because he'll be there. 
This was a, this is a Twitter exchange. This was a I Twitter mean, exchange. Make mistakes this was Twitter. a Twitter exchange of three years ago, which has all been in the media. He's been explained what it meant. Yeah. Come along and ask him himself. And he's got him. supporters tweeting on his website talking about well, niggers, for example. I, well, then his is a free freaks website, he, and he's got yeah. main, means of trying to stop those yeah, but, people coming but onto. But he's not responsible for that. Endorsing someone who's expressed these views. Why are you endorsing someone who talks about? raping or not raping women MPs? Because that was in the context of a Twitter exchange. It wasn't a literal statement oh, by so it's, him. It's just a joke, though. And, uh, it was an ill-considered statement. I certainly wouldn't make it or endorse it. But Carl Benjamin is on our list because he's joined UKIP some time ago. He's one of our supporters. Yeah. And he can get us access to a lot of people on alternative media, yeah. social media, which we are not going to get. Let's face it, Adam, we're not going to get a fair show in the mainstream media because they've decided that they're going to support Nigel Farage. Well, you're here, you're he here. We're going to cover you equally. We, we have had mainstream media pushing the, uh, the Brexit party in the last couple of days for a very good reason. is because they don't represent a political threat, domestic political threat, back home, where we do. We're running 1,400 candidates. Brexit party hasn't got one. We well, can. We are formed. going to. Yeah, I mean, we are know, going to. I mean, the reason why the Brexit Party hasn't got anybody, but well, it hasn't got a because it wasn't formed it in time for the local elections. Hasn't got but, a constitution. But, but it, it hasn't got members. Yeah, it hasn't but, got well, a governing yeah, body. But, I mean, it's a vehicle for one man. Yeah, but let's talk about your party, UKIP. You had 24 elected members of the European Parliament. Uh, you're now down to four. Uh, and only three of them are standing for re-election, including you. Yeah, well, I didn't have anything to do with selecting the last round. Yeah, but it candidates. doesn't. I mean, it's not great. I mean, people people might feel swindled by you. But you see, they, they returned in, in the, uh, 24 members, in the and, second, and they've lost 20 of them. As in members. the second term, Adam. Nigel lost 45% of the mem of the UKIP MEPs throughout the, the, the term because they walked yeah. away for whatever reasons. All the candidates we had in the last one uh, were selected under his regime. Yeah. And the reason, one of the reasons that they walked yeah. away, let me tell you, yeah. first of all, quite a few of them walked away before I came on the scene. When I came, on, not, the scene, you uh, when I came on the scene a yeah. year ago, uh, I sat them all in a room and I said, I want you to honour your pledge to the party to give 10% of your net pay to the party because that's what they signed up to do. Out of the lot of them, only one or two did it, including Nigel, I have to say, he stuck by his pledge. And that's why they've walked away now, because they knew they weren't going to be reselected, because they hadn't honoured their pledge to the party. But, I mean, is that what people should conclude then, that, that UKIP candidates just regard it as a bit of a gravy train? Well, the last ones did, I think. Uh, but this is why we've selected candidates now on the basis that they've, si they've actually signed with us a, a, a contract that they're, going to get, that they're going to contribute to the party, yeah. that we are only there to promote Britain's exit from the European Union, and we want to get out right. as quickly as possible. And your pitch to people watching this, vote for UKIP because... We stand for a clear unimpeded exit, unconditional, uh, unilateral withdrawal. No ifs, no buts, leave. And leave according to the way we say it should be done. So they can send a message to Westminster. And leave now? Yes. OK, thank you very much indeed, Gerald Bratton. Uh